This is the final video in our four part series of Carney Maps. In this video, we look at simplifying four input Carney Maps. So as this video covers how to simplify four input Carney Maps, it does assume you're familiar with the content we've covered in our previous videos. If not, go back and watch those first. So as we know, Carney Maps are a method of simplifying Boolean expressions and a four input Carney map can be used to illustrate an expression with four variables. The expression we're going to simplify is not C and D or A and B. As we have four variables, we put two across each axis. In this case, we've opted to put A and B across the top, C and D down the side, but we could have gone for any configuration we like. We then insert the binary headings representing all the possible states for each of the four variables. Remember, the order of the binary numbers in the headings matters. We cannot simply count up in binary. As we move from one position to the next, we can only change a single digit at a time. These sequences are known as gray codes, and we explained what they are and the reason we need to use them at the end of the last video. Now our Carney map is ready we will place the first part of our expression into it. Remember, we separate the parts of the expression using the OR symbol. So we're starting with not C and D, and there are four cells where C is zero and D is one, so we put one in these cells. The expression we are looking at only contains C and D, so we can ignore A and B at this stage. We now move on to the next part of the expression A and B. And to put A and B in the map, we find all the cells where A is 1 and B is 1. There are four cells where this is the case, so we put 1 in each of these. Now we've placed all parts of the expression into the map, we can simplify it by drawing boxes around the ones, making sure to remember the rules we've already covered for doing so. Given all these rules, the most optimal outcome is shown here. The two boxes will now allow us to simplify the original expression. If we consider the headings for each box and each variable within those boxes, we can see that A stays the same, B stays the same, C stays the same, and D stays the same. We have to keep any variables that stay the same. Well, they all stay the same, so we keep all the variables. What this tells us is that this expression cannot be simplified. OK, let's try another more complex example. Here we've got not A and B and C and D, or not A and B and C, or not D. So we set up a blank Carney map, and as always, we separate the expression with OR symbols. OK, we're starting with not A and B and C and D. Now there's only one cell where A is zero, because it's not A, while B, C and D are one. So we place a one in that box. We now move on to the next part, not A and B and C. A must be zero, it's not A, while B and C must be one. And there are two cells where this is true. So we put a one in each of those. We now move on to the final part of the expression, not D. As this part of the expression only contains the variable D, we can ignore C at this stage. And there are eight cells where D is zero. D being zero because it's not D. And put a one in each of them. Now we've placed all the parts of the expression into the map. We use our set of rules to draw our boxes. Given all these rules, the most optimal outcome is shown here. We've identified one large box of eight using the wraparound rule, and a second box of two. These boxes will now allow us to simplify the original expression. So how do we determine the simplified expression? Well, there's a quick recap of the algorithm we went over in the previous video. we choose to explore the large box of eight ones first. Within that box, we decide to consider variable A first. 
and the number in the heading for A is changing between 0 and 1, so we discard it. We now consider variable B from the same box. The number in the heading for B changes, so we discard it. We now consider variable C from the same box, and the number in the headings for C is changing, so we discard it. And finally, we consider variable D from the same box. Well, this time, the number in the heading for D stays the same. It's a zero in both cases, so we keep it. Remember, as the value in the heading is a zero, and that's what we're keeping, we're keeping not D. We're finished with a large box of eight ones, and the only variable we're keeping is not D, so that entire box is simplified to not D. We now move on to the other box, which contains two ones, and we consider A first. The number in the heading for A obviously is staying the same, as there's only one value in the heading, so we keep it. Remember, as the numbers are zero, we're keeping not A. We now move on to variable B. The number in the heading for B stays the same if there's only one entry, so we keep it. And the number in the heading for C is staying the same. It's one in both cases, so we keep it. The number in the heading for D is changing from a one to a zero, so we discard it. So we now know this box can be simplified to not A and B and C. The first box represents not D. The second box represents not A and B and C. And different parts of the expression, so the different boxes we're looking at, are separated by ors. We've simplified the original expression down to not D or not A and B and C. This simplified expression could also have been written as not A and B and C or not D, and there are many other valid combinations. The order of your simplified expression is determined only by the order in which you consider the boxes and the variables. However, because of the law of commutation, each version is valid and each version will be accepted in the exam. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How can Carnu maps be used to simplify Boolean expressions? So just before we end this video, we want to make you aware of our freely available Boolean algebra cheat sheet. This is a double sided cheat sheet that comes in A4 or A3 version, which can be used as posters. And it covers all the information on Boolean algebra, various logic gates, truth tables, definitions, and a lot more material we'll be going over in future videos, all in one handy double-sided sheet. You can find this over at student.craigandave.org. Just scroll down to where it says A-level revision. If you select that, you will see OCR A-Level Revision, including a whole bunch of free resources, including these cheat sheets. You can click download, no subscription or logins required, and you'll get access to this cheat sheet.